This is a University of Otago podcast. Hello and welcome to Otago University Vote Chat 2011. Vote Chat is a series of conversations we're having with, having with politicians here on campus. We're filming this live in a studio in the uh, University of Otago Media Production Studio where we've got an audience here and we're trying to do things a bit differently because we've got an election coming up and basically we've invited along MPs and politicians to tell us why they think we should vote for them or their parties and what they believe in and what they're all about politically. So, you know, trying to do things differently. We're doing this on Twitter as well. So hopefully we'll get some question, questions in from uh, the Twitter sphere using the hashtag OUVoteChat2011 so people can give their reactions as well. Uh, the audience also hopefully will be um, being noisy and um, cheering or booing, whatever they feel like. And we're assisted, assisted today by Nikki Lomax, who is an um, honours student in politics here at the uh, university. Okay, so today we have got Green MP Catherine Delahante, and we're going to find out what she's all about um, and where the Greens are going. Okay, so welcome, Catherine. Oh, kia ora, Bryce. Great kia ora. to be here. Okay, so we'll find out. I won't introduce you because we're going to find out all about you through the course of the next 40 minutes or so. Um, you going back right to the start. You were pretty much a, a red diaper baby, is that right? Your, your father was a communist? Your, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I was born in a Wellington left-wing family. Um, my earliest memories are protesting on the steps of Parliament. My dad was the anti-Vietnam coordinator and also anti-nuclear. So I spent a lot of time delivering leaflets and letterboxes, and I'm still doing it. It's kind of weird. Well, but, uh, and so how did that evolve um, over the years? Did you? Well, I went to Vic University for a while, but I, um, I got sick of the schisms and isms of left-wing politics okay. in Wellington at the time at Vic. Yep. And I went off to be a hippie in the country, thinking I would get away from politics, but you never do. <laughs> to live on a commune? Yeah, you know, I lived on a commune for a while in, um, in Coromandel. Um, oh, what was the commune, by the way? I was called Opuhi, yeah. Okay. yeah. And so, you know, I, learned, I know a lot about vegetables, yeah. um, but I didn't escape from mining because, and, and political issues, and my, own, um, my childhood training has been very useful because at the time in the Coromandel, large multinational gold companies decided to, um, that they were going to dig up our whole area. So right. I used my, my childhood training to be part of an activist group, which I'm still part of okay. 30 years later. So, so what age were you when you were getting into these environmental issues? Uh, probably in, in my early, late 20s, early 30s, I started getting into the environmental stuff. So and would this be the 80s? Or? Yeah, the yeah. 80s. Okay, yeah. so yeah. you were a Green before the Green Party existed? Um, I think they were, there was a parallel universe going on with the Values Party, but I was, I, I was never interested in parliamentary politics at that stage of okay. my life at all. So you were, you were kind of just a grassroots activist? Absolutely. Doing the environmental yeah, community stuff. worker, grassroots activist. Okay. Yeah. But so you went in the, the values party no. in those days. No. Okay. So, so were you basically the sort of hippie um, stereotype that the Greens are trying to, you know, sort of shift away from um, being associated with? Or, I mean, what's? Uh, <laughs> is... Yeah. I mean, you, you could say that. I think that um, I'm like a lot of people. I'm. I, I lived through the 1780s and learned a lot from that. Yeah. Like not just milking goats, but making change, yeah. and so I've evolved into being an activist in Parliament at the moment. But I, I I'm proud of my roots and where I come mm. from, and I think there are a lot of people in the Greens who are proud of having had that very back to the land direct experience to inform the changes that need to happen. Because free market capitalism is not going to fix the planet. So, you know? so, so would you ever go back to that sort of stuff, like back to that? Sort well, of... I live in the country now in the Coromandel, okay. and um, I, I don't have a goat. <laughs> I don't have time to milk things right now. OK, we've got a question. Yeah. I have a quick question about that free market capitalism. Yeah. Um, up on the Greens website, there's uh, some of the trade policies that the Greens Party stands for. And the first point says that the Green Party will support the right of Aotearoa, New Zealand and other nations to encourage local, social and ecologically sustainable development and foster self-reliance, e.g. oppose forced trade through compulsory market access and similar mechanisms. I was just wondering if you could talk to us a bit about that forced trade component and what the Greens Party feels that that really means. I think it's, it's 
the euphemism of free trade is really forced trade. So what we're saying is we don't believe in um, free, so-called free trade agreements with countries where um, the labour force is exploited, where the environment is polluted, and where trade is neither fair nor free. So obviously we support international trade, but it has to be fair trade. And so we are opposing the TPP, we are opposing all the other free trade agreements. And if you look at the ones that, the bilaterals that, that New Zealand has already signed up for, we ain't benefiting from it. The evidence is that the other countries are. So we're not only looking at, we're not only not looking after our own economy, we're also um, engaging with countries who do not have um, the appropriate human rights and environmental justice record. So, so we are very challenging and we're the only party mm. that I've heard in Parliament that will get up I and think, say no to free trade. I think on the issue of trade it's where the Greens are quite differentiated yeah. from all the other parties, especially yeah. Labour. Um, yeah. So, uh, but it's still a bit curious because um, if you're trying to support the people in those countries, wouldn't they not want you to stop us trading with them because wouldn't it mean they will lose their jobs? That's not what they say. What they say? You know, well, people through the international um, union networks, you will hear the voices of people being mm. exploited, and what they want is justice and they want a fair wage and they don't want us um, playing games with their lives and their wages through our relationship with their governments. They want us to be staunch. And we're a small country but we're a country that's led the world on a lot of issues. I'm, I'm a great believer in international solidarity with those people. Okay. I mean that's really interesting but again I, what it kind of is curious for me is what countries, where do we draw the line? Because I, I agree with you, there's all these different um, bad situations going on in countries, but what I can't quite see is it's all a grey area to me that, um, yes, some are worse than others, but there's no kind of uh, litmus test I can't really see between, the, I mean, unless you can tell me, I don't know, what, well, why I mean, should, we, you... what should we trade with the US? Should we trade with um, you know, <laughs> countries like um, Fiji or, I mean, can you give me an idea? Well, I do think it is a case-by-case -case relationship and it's like saying what, what um, is going on at the time in that place and what influence can we bring to bear and if we go into a free trade agreement that just props up, our, um, a, a, like China for example has mm. got some serious human rights issues, you know, sure. it's not just to bet, it's but, all but kinds so does, of issues. But so does the US. Oh, the US does as well. I've got huge problems with us going into a free trade deal with the US. I don't think we should. I mean, there are, there are a number of arguments against going in with the US. The US is a country in meltdown at the moment, yeah. very interesting times, and I do challenge our, um, us wanting to go into free trade, partly because, not only because of human rights but because if we go in with big countries like the US and China it's like okay. a, a shark will eat a minnow and we're the minnow okay, so about, it's not even self-preservation. What about, what about Australia then? Do you, Australia, do you think we should have a free trade oh, agreement? I don't think we should have a free trade agreement with them. Again, they're a much more powerful economy. I think we need yeah. to have a relationship based on rules that actually protect our own workers as sure. well as Australia. I mean, that's a, I'm not the trade expert for the Greens, sure, but I am sure. saying yeah. that we need to put tests up there about yeah. how trade is actually going to play out for our own people, but also for the people in those countries. And okay. I don't think we ask those questions. <laughs> OK, another question um, from Andrew Lim, a politics and history student. Hi. Hi, Andrew. Um, but, you know, the collapse like of those Warsaw Pact regimes in Eastern Europe in 1989, like some have argued on, on the right that it sh shows like, the problems of communism, whereas like, some on the left, like the Trotskys, argued that those regimes never really were communists in reality, like they were just state capitalists. Mm -hmm. So, so, so where do you stand in that position? An uh, age-old question. It's a left. great question on the yeah. left, eh? I was brought up in this debate where um, my dad, for example, first he was um, pro-Stalin and he realised Stalin was a bastard and then he was like pro-Mao and then he realised that the Cultural Revolution wasn't fair and then yeah, I think we ended up with Cuba <laughs> and I mean there are issues there too but there is no, for me, there is no pure ideological model in, in, in economic terms. We actually need to, another world is possible but it needs to be defined by the people. Rather than saying we need you know, pure Marxism or pure capitalism, we actually need to start talking about people power in a real way and that means that countries need to engage their populations in participatory democracies. We haven't experienced that. We vote every four years or three years, not even four some years. And it's not really what I call a, de a participatory democracy. The South Americans are doing some experiments because they're actually a lot more politicised as citizens. So I don't think there is any pure model 
or has been any pure model. Economies are always about power, and, and what happens, especially I'm a feminist, what happens is the old power goes up to the boys at the top, and then you, get, you do the same old thing, whatever you call it. And the thing the Greens bring to the debate is, what about the planet? What about the sustainability of finite resources? And neither um, state capitalism in, in, in Russia or China or communism or capitalism has addressed the fact that we are actually killing um, uh, the environment is the economy and we're killing our environment. So that's one of the things we add to, uh, not instead of the debate about class um, issues, but we add to that debate. Yeah. Okay.